have reached 1998 and right knowledge is reaching people all over the world. The Supreme Grand Master, Naya Malachi Zadok York L, is truly setting the record straight. Now listen to these facts, the voice of truth in these last days and times. The Nuwapian Nation of Moors brings you the man of the hour. Was it possible for Nimrod to build a tower up to God? Was it possible? Don't you answer it. Was it possible, according to their religion, was it possible for Nimrod to do it? Yes. I told you don't answer. So you don't <laughs> yes, it was possible. You know why it was possible? Because in their Bible, and God would not have to come down to stop them if it wasn't possible. Now, if God came down and stopped them, then he believed that it was possible. <laughs> if you don't believe it, if the church don't believe it, God believed it, which is Tammuz, and he said, I'm going down to see the city. They only tell you all about the tower. The first statement is the city and the uh, tower. You see what they're doing down there. They said, well, because they have their own language. It says his language. They have their own language. And they have this project they're building on. Look what they're doing. Nothing I can do. I have no power to stop them. Unless I go down and cause dissension. Imagine God saying, I look down over this city and I see this city coming up. And I see a tower being built. Right? It's reaching to me. He said there's nothing that they imagine that, that, will, that they won't be able to do. What being, what beings, or being can do anything they imagine. Uh, and God only. See, that's where you start the conversation. You say, what being or beings can do anything they imagine nobody can stop? Them. And they will all say, God. You say, no. Nimrod and his people. <laughs> <laughs> and your God said in Genesis 11 10. They did it. Now, Jehovah Witness, if you happen to be with the Christian groups, Jehovah Witness on the Seven Day Adventist, one of those people who study the Bible. When you flip the Bible open before you get started, you say, let me talk about Nimrod. You say, Nimrod, was he a white man or a black man? No, they'll give me. Nimrod was black. And they'll say, right in the Jehovah Witness books, all of them. No, he's a black man. So you say, was a black man back before Egypt and Babylon building a city? I wonder. They won't miss the city. Read Genesis. And he had no power to reach heaven. There was a master building, a master architect who was black. Back that far, before the pyramids was being built, he was building that city. According to their Bible, that was before, before Egypt came, but Mizraim is Egypt. So you're going by that philosophy. So according to that there, this guy built these cities and this tower to heaven was going through the clouds in the point where God saw it. You dig? He was black. But you tell us we ain't the people. You make us look like we've been out there running around naked and banging on drums all the time. But your Bible says that we built a tower that made your God scared. Your God. You said, well, well, who's that? I thought he was your God too. They know. Now, Moses was appointed over the Enosites, not over the Jebedeans. Not over the Jebedeans. There in Nimrod is called a mighty hunter in front of God. You look at the word mighty, you get the word give all. This means Jebedeans. Go back to Genesis 6, you find out there were some sons of God who became mighty men. They did not subscribe to Tammuz. They did not read the Torah. They had their own tablets. They had their own books. They had their own concept of God. And that concept was that they were all God as long as they all stayed unified and worked as a body. As long as they had a master craft of work. And that master craftsmanship was the building of a city and a tower that scared the God of mythology. Scared the God of Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. To the point where he didn't go by himself only. He went back and got some boys and said, now let us all go down. <laughs> <laughs> and these people were so profound that they predicted what the God of the Bible would do before he did it. They said, let us build a tower to reach the heavens, to make a name for ourselves, or else he's going to scatter us. 
and then he said, let us go down there and split their tongues up and scatter them abroad. They mentioned it before he did. <laughs> so they predicted what this God was saying in heaven before he got to earth. The tower was real close if they were listening. <laughs> they were that high up where they were actually listening to God. <laughs> but they would make you think Nimrod's a bad man. But the Nimrod, his name is Quran in Islam, that's what we taught. It means to rebel. They don't say, who was he rebelling against? Huh? They don't know. They don't know. Who was he really? His name was Saul Don. S A R G O N. That's his real name. The Bible gave him the name. Yeah, the same way the Bible gave Kedman the name Adam. You follow that? Because they have to get their records, their genealogy of Isis, Genesis, in order. And they finish Genesis 2 and say, now the, he the host of the heaven and earth are finished. Someone say, what are you talking about? So when God said, let there be light, what was he saying? What's the Hebrew word for light? Or. Huh? Hebrew, no. not Arabic. No. Or. No. Or. Or. Any Anybody in the Bible that says, let there be light in Genesis, look it up, you see the word, you are. Or. There you go. Now, when they say, let there be light, what might they have been doing? Were they building a heaven? Or were they building a city? It was a city that Abraham came from called Or. Same word. Exact same word. They said, <laughs> when they said, come on man, let there be light. They were bringing about the city of Or in Chaldea. Another one of the Babylonian cities of the God Nimrod. Christians think they were bringing about the sun, which we know had to have already existed because God saw that the gold was good in Genesis. And the gold was good, you need the sun to produce gold. So there had to be gold here before that. So now what were they talking about? See, if once you learn the meanings of this, this the, the real meanings behind the stories of the Bible, you get a whole other story. That's another level of information you got to go to. First of all, you got to, well, we're there. First of all, you had to get this fundamental crap out of your heart. You had to get belief stuff out of your heart. Start to get a picture of this God and this Allah and how, how unimportant weak he really is in relation to us unless you're taking the name and applying it to the right source. Because if you base, if you base it around what the Muslims call Allah, he's just the oldest person. Allah Akbar. Kabir. Akbar. Old. And I suppose they say, they'll say, Inta Kabir, how, how old are you? Ajus is another slang word, but the words Kabir, Kabir, the age. Akbar, old. He's just old. That's the ancient one. Al Awl is older than Akbar. The name Al Awl, Allah is named the first. The first would be older than Akbar. Because in order for you to be the old, you have to be younger. And you couldn't be the first. You can become the oldest, Allahu Akbar, without, the, without you having passed or have been El Aul. And how would you decide that you're the oldest? How can I be older than if he don't exist? How can I be the first unless there are others equal to me to be the first one? You understand? Because if there's something coming after me that's not equal, then I wouldn't be the first of them. I'd be the only one. And that's why Muslims get confused with Allah being Ahad and al Awal and Akbar. And they don't bother, they say, well, faith, Imam, believe it. If you question it, we want to hurt you. Because when you get right down to the fine new, when you get into it, you start like a doctor taking it apart. You start seeing how shallow it is. And they'll lose control of the people in the life and they'll start running back towards the doctor. They run back towards the doctor, so what happens. People sit down and think in darkness because if you keep moving around, you're going to bump into something. <laughs> <laughs> the light introduces the fascists, the fascia, the chaos, the truck. That's why every dollar bill, every building, every courthouse, every church, now they got crosses with the sun on them. And all the dollar bill is going to the sun. All of the gas stations across the country use the symbols of the sun. And depending on the light, 
because they weren't here in the garden. And you find out that the Dogon, as I explained, and let the record straight, when a child was born among the Dogon, they were born, they were birthed in the cave. When they come out, they only they come out at night. The first thing they look up and they see beneath the foot of Orion, they see the Sirius Star constellation. That's the first thing they see. That's mentioned in their Quran. The Muslims won't address it. The actual star, the dog star. To explain that, they explain the zodiac in the Quran. You know, you tell them Spain Joe and about uh, Pleiades and Arcturus and they want to talk about other stuff. They can't address the true meanings of these, these manuscripts that was put together by these Anunnaki for these people. So govern you, to give you laws to govern you. But only for those amongst you who have chosen to be men. That applies to women, there's no gender here. For those amongst you who decide to become gods, you become a problem to them. Because they can't defend their god. And they believe their god should be able to defend himself. Or that their god is beyond the need of defense. That all beings need. When you step forth and you start questioning them about God, the significance of God, the power of God, the abilities of God, the inconsistencies of God, and most of all, the errors of God. You say, what do you mean? Well, Stevie Wonder is born blind. Now, is he in the image and the likeness of God? If he is, so God's blind. You know what I mean? This kid over here is born without a brain. He's going have two, two Siamese twins born as one. There's already two there, so that can't be an image and the likeness of God. And how come Siamese twins ain't in the Bible? Blindness is in the Bible. Not normal, normal abnormalities can be found. But the abstractions they don't mention. How come? How come they don't mention um, elephantitis in the Bible? They might have. Or did God didn't have that information? <laughs> he didn't know what Siamese twins were. So if he had to address it back that far and have to explain it to an inquiring mind he'd be stuck. So the Bible avoids it. What else does it avoid? It avoids most of the animals on the planet. It makes mistakes and calls bats birds. In the book of Leviticus, it says the bat, the name is food that we can't eat. And it says, and a fowl of the air, right? And it has bat listed. It never mentions the fowl of the earth. You understand? What do you mean to follow the earth, Doc? Birds that don't fly. What are they? They're not even in the Bible. The ostrich, the most powerful symbol of ancient Egypt. Why don't they have a mention in the Bible? Where's the chicken? No, he's there, but he's not mentioned as a fowl of the earth. They have to follow the air. That means you fly. You understand what I'm saying? Hamsters are not in the Bible. Rodents are mentioned. Camels are there. Horses are there. Donkeys are there. But the miniature horses ain't mentioned. Oh, roaches are there. <laughs> yeah, roaches are in the Bible. We brought them. They come from us. Now that's what they say. All of a sudden, you don't believe them no more? And they say we created roaches? They say you go to niggas, there's going to be roaches, right? But we created the roaches. Why deny? Why deny? Let them make the mistake of saying niggas created roaches. One of the most powerful, unstoppable forces of insects on the damn planet. <laughs> Uncontrollable. We did. Yeah, we did. <laughs> they will have to take it back. If you approach things the right way, they'll have to take it back. <laughs> Like, oh, you niggas created, you brought them niggas in Puerto Rican black folks, you know that? Yeah, we created roaches. We created the most destructive, powerful, metam and, and thing, and they metamorphosized from little roaches on into big ass roaches. <laughs> Flying roaches. Water yeah, water we did. <laughs> now, what did you create? We created roaches. What did you create? They got an answer. So, if we created anything, we're God. Right. 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 Right.
So if everything that they take to make bad, you just reverse it and make it good. If you're locked up in jail long enough, you have roaches for pets. <laughs> have them named and everything else. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> And it wouldn't be so bad then if the only person you got or the only thing you got to talk. In other words, our concept of deity and their concept of deity is wrong. We got, and we got to stop being afraid to stand up for our concept of deity. Our concept of deity is not a deity of faith. Father, I'm going to be scared of you. Oh, oh, you're the top one. Brother, you need to talk one. You need to pray of a God. I don't need to. Why? Why do I be scared of God? You not want to walk up to God with open hands and feel the most comfortable, the most warm, the most loving feeling. What do you worry about? But if once I once I meet a law, he might burn me. Right. <laughs> depending on his mood. Right. Or worse than that, depending on certain actions that I do that I couldn't have done if you didn't give me the nature. Right. Now they get mad. The Christians say, I could not have committed any sin. <laughs> <We're over here. laughs> There's no sin that anybody could have committed on this planet, whether it was Jeffrey Dahmer who they claim claimed eight people or suicide cult where they all were encouraged to go commit suicide or bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki for that matter or the, or the creation of AIDS for that matter. None of these sins could be committed if you believe God is in control of everything. The start there is God in control of everything. That's right. And then the next question is how long has God, I check this, been in control of everything? I want you to think about this for a minute. How long has God been in control? Was God in control of everything in the 17th century? Yes or no? Yeah, according to them. We're talking to them. Was God in control of everything in the 16th century? Yes. So anything that happened after the 16th century and the 17th century, God is made happen. Right? So then, if God didn't make cars, there would be no cars. And God was in control in 1917, before cars. And God knew everything before it happened. So God knew that he was going to let cars be created in the minds of his creatures, and that they were going to go out and drunk and drive and kill innocent people. And he let it happen. Was God in existence before the gun? Did God, as the all-knowing, know that some man somewhere would create a gun? Yeah. Did he know, as the all-knowing, that some man or some fool, some wife, would leave the gun in the house and some child would pick it up and shoot his baby brother or sister? Yeah. And he let it happen. Come on, Christian, tell me why. Come on, Muslim, tell me why Allah let that happen. Yeah, we can. We can because we're God. They can because they're men. Just believe. That's right. Now how many things in life can you go back to and view God from a different perspective? How many places can you see him wrong? Let me say, plane crashes. Was God around before planes? Right, that's right. Yeah. What else? Volcano. Huh? Volcano. God around before the first volcano erupted? Like you hold a belt in the right place? Could he just let it? I can't belt, I just met this new lady, I don't check myself. <laughs> <laughs> you belt backwards rather than belt forward so you don't want to look like a pig. <laughs> Your God, you have the control over this body at that point because it's a voluntary function. So obviously if you can control the belt, belt, belt just fall on the voluntary. Get that? You can't control your heartbeat totally. So that falls on the involuntary. So then God must have also laws of voluntary and involuntary. Those things which I allow man to create to the construct that are constructive. I volunteer, I did it. But those things that I allowed man to create that are destructive, I tell you, they were involuntary. He did that of his own free will. And I want to know why it's called free will, because I ain't paid for it. But you tell me, for all the things I've done on earth that's evil, out of my free will, I will pay for it on judgment day. So it's not free will. It's a big price for will. <laughs> <laughs> so if it's free, then I should be able to do anything I want to anybody I want and never pay for it. Out goes y'all's hell. Right. And death and tormentation. See, if they can't think like God, and you better learn to think like God. Because only God's 
survive earthly calamities. Mortals die. Gods live on. Where will we then? that we live on. Christianity speaks. Jesus gives you everlasting life. But he died for, the world, for your sins. Right. Open contradiction, blatant stupidity. <laughs> when you take on the role of God, you say, I am God. Well, say, that's the supreme God there. Malachi, that's our supreme God. I ain't no problem with it. Right. I said, well, how do y'all worship him? Did I say I worship him? Exactly. I said, he is the supreme God. I'm a God. He made me a God. Right. So he was here before me. Right. <laughs> so he's the first. He's an owl. <laughs> <laughs> and only way he could be came the first, if I was standing here by myself saying I'm God, nobody acknowledged that, I'd be all by myself, like a law. A law needed people to acknowledge him as a law in order for him to be a law. If nobody acknowledged him, he'd be just saying, I'm a law. In that Indian law. Show him the law. <laughs> but they gave him the attribute, the first. The first of God. And the Jews used it too. Ah, same word, one. Same one. And makes it clear that you should have no other God before me. Which makes it clear that other gods can get in front of you. Right, right. That's what it before me means, standing before me. Other gods can. Well, Pharaoh was a god, and Moses was sent by a god in Exodus 7 to as a god before a god to show how powerful the god is that sent him. Well, if I'm a god, and I send you, Moses, as Elohim to the Pharaoh. See how it works? That's their teaching. That's in their Bible and they can't see it. And you say, well, we know God. And God has sent us as gods against you men to test your God. You follow? No more staffs and serpent tricks to save that for Las Vegas. Uh -huh. <laughs> David Copperfield. We're going to come from mind to mind, the ultimate test. Not the sleight of hand, but the mind. Let's talk about it the power of God and what God can and cannot or will and will not or should and should not have done. He should not have allowed any man to conceive in his mind of God. Mm. Are we in favor of the reality that it would have been to man's advantage now if he never had it done? Yes. So the whole world of, of anybody who agrees with that agrees that God is wrong mm -hmm. <laughs> for allowing the gun to be made. You understand that? Right. And anybody here who's lost a relative in a car crash believes God is wrong for allowing the car to be made. And for allowing the mind to conspire to put together the crack. Yet not knowing that it's addictive and poison. God gave man his intellect. I was going to say, the first thing God put him was his intellect. That's what we said, didn't we? Should have lied like the law. The first thing, he gave us our intelligence. You know what I'm saying? He gave us free will. So do we have free will? No, hell no. The reason why I say we don't have free will, because you say you gave me free will, and then if I decide I will not to worship your ass, you're going to burn me. Of <laughs> course, you said I have free will. If I have free will, I can tell you, guess what, God? Kiss my ass. <laughs> and nothing should happen to me. Don't lie and say you first. God gave you free will, so you can make your own decision. Okay, one of my decisions is, God, I don't believe in your ass. Or, better yet, I believe I can go to heaven even if I commit sin, God. That's my free will. And you have already agreed that you gave me free will. You can't change the mind, but God doesn't change. In mind. That's right. That's right. So here we go. All the devils going to heaven. <laughs> because that's free will. You hear what I'm saying? Right. They're not ready for that. What's sad about it is we ain't either at this point. Time is running out on us so fast that they need to make nothing. 
next message comes inside here. And it's going to happen in a show of hands. It's going to happen in honesty or dishonesty. But it's going to show right here. I, talk, I talked to you all years ago about ascending and descending here. I said amongst us there's a fear of undisciplined people. Right? A lot of y'all know 17 months from now, computers and stuff is supposed to shut down. And Windows 98 failed. All of us who touch computers know it failed. And it was supposed to solve the problem. You may not have thought about the reality of computers shutting down, but I just touch on some small things like the pumps that run the water in your house. The generators that run the electricity in your house. The street lights. The trains. The planes, all of them are run by computers. The hospitals, the prisons, okay, they're locked in though, they're safe. <laughs> all these things can be affected in less than 17 months. And Bill Gates doesn't have an answer for it. Well, Bill Gates does have an answer for it. He actually was talking about that just before I came out. He's actually the richest man on the planet. Correct? Right. So years ago when I told you about Billy Graham, you understood that Billy Graham that Billy represented the goat. Right. Right? And the gates represent the vortex. The gateway between heaven and hell. Nobody's asking what happened to the kid who was born on June 6th of 1966. Bill Gates is around that age. No one knows. We talked about his number, his number six. Because computers configurate by six. Binary figures is one and oh. And that first force is the six is nine, that first force is the nine is six. Our, nine, our number is nine, his number is up. And they're both based on the number three. Triads of life. All religions, all beliefs, all logics. He said three. Ready? What's the next thing? Six. What's the next one? Uh, so we got the loop of the three triads, three sums. And then we have the first one, which is six. Six. Followed by nine. I right, add on six more. Fifteen. Fifteen, what is that? Add on six more. What is that? Three. Add on six more. What is that? Nine. Add on six more. Put the, no. All right, get back. Thirty. Keep going. What's that? Add on six more. Six. Add on six more. I can keep going. You're trapped. You're trapped in a hexagram of spell. The only thing that breaks it is the code 9. 9 to 19. Two numbers are multiple. By any number for themselves. But everywhere you go with 9, it comes out to be 9. 99. And, and 9. Which is. And 9. Which is. And it keeps on going. 9 times 9. Which is. Only number that gets out. Two beings. Yes. Six beings with us, not six ether. I'm talking about hair. I love that crap. Makes you feel <laughs> important. I'm talking about beings among us. They are those adverse forces, the six and the nine. Which is the force itself. Right? Add it up this year. Some are going this way. Some are going that way. Amongst you, in your own congregation, they're going to start to be rebel. Rebel without. They're going to start preaching about what they're preaching in the streets. They're going to get the kids and tell the kids. And the kids are saying, I want to go to school. I want a life. I feel like I have no life. I want to go to a party. They're on their way towards the two great cities planted on earth. One or the other. One is Las Vegas and the other is Disney World. You hear me? Who created Las Vegas? Water. No, look at that fancy. It's simple, simple than the mafia, mafia, killers, based on blood money. Let's discuss what goes on there in that land of Nard. Let's see what we have there. We have prostitution legal, gambling, what else, drugs. 
with the fuck. Murder is legal. Murder in corporate. This is the city of evil. It's lit up. It's bright. It's full of gaudy women, tight skirts and short pants, fancy niggas with diamonds and gold and gambling and drinking and all the stuff that the devil wants. Disney World was created by a guy named Walt Disney, typical American. He just wanted to create a family theme park based around a cartoon called Mickey Mouse. Was it based around whores, prostitutes, and drugs, and alcohol? It's a family place. So there's going to be two kind of places. There's going to be six flags, and there's going to be Kodesh or Wahani. Now, Wahani and Kodesh falls in with the Disney World. Understand though, many of y'all, not you here because y'all come up and down, they want to do that here, want us to use this stage strictly for music and partying for them. They want to bring Las Vegas here. What's happening in the hearts of our people now, and take the message back, right, is a split now. There's demons amongst us. We're in the feathers and everything, you can't trust them. They're in your house with you. They're thinking party. They make excuses for getting party. Yeah. 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 When you're going out there, the people go around and tell you what we're doing here. There are people right amongst you, and they're turning their hearts to people. Some people are dreaming another time. Some people are dreaming dreaming of fun. It's like how much fun I haven't had yet, where I haven't been, how to spend my good time with Sean. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. You see, you know, it's happening amongst us right now. Many are called. If you were told, you were coming into the countdown mm -hmm. for those who realize that this day was going to come. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to find right amongst your own people, mm -hmm. essentially, right in your own law, if you want to call it, right inside there, two people there, and one person going to try and encourage you to do the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. And make it look like the right thing to do. It's okay. And people are going to listen to them. Like that. <laughs> it might even turn on you. Turn on you for trying to do the right thing and make everybody think you're wrong. Damn. So we all going down in condition. Two weeks from now to see Bob. I can't make it. We're going to do so and so. We're going to, you know, see Bob another time. I can't make it. Never going to make it to see the man. You always got some excuse when you come down to stand in front of him. It's your fear. There's war is going on between me and Zuet. My host and his host. My host is infiltrated by his host. Some of, that, some of my hosts are being swept up and taken in to his host. This guy might be a good man. Start socializing with the wrong man. He takes him on into the wrong place. And slowly but surely, he starts to like the place. He starts a transformation from that 180 degrees of agreeable to 180 degrees of disagreeable and then slowly 360 degrees of disagreeable. You can't get back over. I don't actually anybody see me understand. Go ahead, sit down and watch all four. Make everybody you know sit there and watch it. Stand, S-T-A-N-D. And you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. You'll know why. Stephen King and Steven Spielberg himself is in the movie with him. That's right. Why these two people got together and put this movie together. Exactly. Remember the movie now? Remember, remember Mother Abigail? Yes, Mother Abigail. Yes. On the court, playing the guitar. Very good song. In the court. Remember Flag? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the um, Flag? Yeah, Flag. Yeah. Don't tell them all of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and those who listen, go watch it. They'll, then they'll say, we understand what we're talking about, but, but we have now reached that point. Yeah. So what should we do with this? First of all, the key word we use here is association. Stop associating. Realize that they are there like Nadine. 
Not a lot of time, as our, some people's souls are inclining towards spiritual. You better watch the media. You better go open a store and get this information out there before it's too late. Okay. We want you to sell books to make money for us. Money ain't going to be a damn thing in a little while. Because <laughs> the banks are going to close again. Because the banks are also ran by the damn community. Yeah. Well, well, if they don't hurt them to solve that problem, y'all got a mess on your hands. They're not doing no damn much. It's about how many souls you can save before it's too late. So get out there and get the people. They took me the other way. As you said, if you're missing the point again, then you deserve to die. You deserve to find out. You keep on missing the point. With all the knowledge that we've been given in the last five years, we got more knowledge poured down to us than organizations that have been around for 30, 40, 50 years. They don't know. People all over the world are starting to be touched by the by right knowledge. The most amazing thing, you don't think the force is a disagreeable. You prepare and see it. They see how many of y'all snatched them feathers off. Quick. Stop popping feathers off. They were feathers for about a period of three weeks, four weeks, a month, and all the feathers disappeared. Just like that. Nobody wants to get that far. Nobody wants to go out there and say, this is me. You know what I'm saying? Hi. And, and then, yeah, people say to me, oh, oh, what are we going to do? It's Doomsday's coming. What are we going to do? So I thought you had confidence that the other people were coming. I thought that's what it was all about. Why are you panicking now? This computer shut down. What do we care? Right, right. 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 If you wasn't in their world, up their world, you would be having that damn problem. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't have time for that crap. Time for you message to people. A message you had to understand and take a place inside your lodge. People sitting there that are black devils. Not because they're born to be black devils, because they have succumbed. The temptations of this world because HTM gave them books and stuff and now they got more money in their hands than they ever had before and they don't understand the power of the dollar. Mm -hmm. You have a protection that's <laughs> on the back of the dollar, a new name is on the back of the dollar, looking right at you. Right in front of you. Don't say the dollar. You think it's a coincidence whose silver dollar bill is going to have Satchikui on it? Did you know about that? The new, the new coin dollar bill is coming out. Next year, it's going to have Sacha on it. Sacha Kui, the, the Sacha Kui of Ben York. <laughs> Two Egyptian deities are here. And knew it. And knew it, what this? And is Anu's name. Right. And knew it is a female deity direct on the raw, which is the female that's equivalent to like saying Ishtar. Okay. And knew it. That's like saying Anu and Ishtar right here. What this is nothing but the word for Cyprus for Peter, for rock, for bird. The eye is surrounded by three points. The three again. The three suns. You don't think they believe in the three suns? Yeah, they believe in the three suns. They teach you about the three suns every day in your life. They call Jesus the Son, they call the soul the Son, and then there's the, the Son. That one there is the vital life source. The other one is supposed to be the spiritual source, and you're supposed to be the manifestation. The three principles of three great light. And they take you back to ancient Egypt, and you say, well, tell us about Hatun, Atu, and Amun. Tell us about those two, those three deities. Every one of them had Ra affixed to their name. You have Atum Ra, Atin Ra, and Amun Ra. And where are the three Ra? Who are they? And they identified them with three cities. Memphis, Heliopolis, and Osakana. I'll have, I'll have to say Wasab, Wasab, because that's the name they use. I can't do the English translation. But those are the three cities of the three great gods. And they traveled down Egypt. You know what? They call it Ta Mari. They had Ta Nisi. And then they go down to Nubia. <laughs> These are the three cities as the pharaohs moved down, or which is really up the Nile. They brought down with them the ascension of God going down. You hear that? In your Bible. God says, let us go down there 
to the children of Israel, he set them free. All he did is left from upper Egypt to go <laughs> down there. But that was going from Sudan towards the Mediterranean. Down is up there. But everything back in perspective. Put the planet back where it belongs. Off of 20 feet of the axis. And down is up and up is down. <coughs> Egypt is down there. Once you shift up here now, 20 feet of the axis, it's all about this much. Put it back like this. Yeah, Egypt is already here. Egypt went up down here. Sudan ends up in the Congo. The whole thing shifts. Let me put it back. What point are you at now? May 5th, 2000. 5-5, 2000. What do they say? They're saying the planet Earth will be on this side of the sun and seven other planets will line up on this side of the sun. And the gravitational pull will be too complicated for the stress of the planet. So what's happening as it's starting to happen, we're starting to have more volcano eruptions, more tornadoes, more earthquakes, more landslides, more snow because the earth is already falling in place, getting close. So things are starting already to happen. Well, he's about to say to people that ants all along, I laugh and walk away. And I say, what would happen if the the black man to be destroyed? All the plants we draw back from the sun, which results in star holographs that we're lying upon to create air bodies in space, called space, beyond space. You bet? And I say, ha ha, and I walk away. And he says, ha, oh, what do you mean by that? No, one day I'll tell you. We have no place in this long, I'm So what does it mean? What would happen if it was possible for the black man to be destroyed? All the planets will be drawn back towards the sun. Because we are the magnetic attraction that keeps this universe in the fifth point. We created nine planets in space and beyond the space coast too. And we have to go to the other sun. Energy nomadic will be destroyed when the change in its appearance. That's what would happen if it was possible for the black man to be destroyed. But that term black back then, black man would be five men, not the middle of five men. And what will happen in the year 2000 if you are not in a God-like state? The black man will have been destroyed. He would have been broken. I think my brother was saying, black man is on the endangered species list, whether you know it or not. You know what I'm saying? He said, well, what do you mean by that? Well, look at us. We ain't black man. Huh? Very few. We're not black no more. You're, you're genetically breeding right out. This is a concentrated effort by giving us the wrong impression of beauty. It makes us pursue things that destroy our beauty. The Bible says, told Abraham, or Abraham, marry all. Marry Pastor. Everything in all major deciding families that you may know each other. That doesn't mean when you see a black man or white woman together, it's your turn to start picking on them. Because then I would say that you're in doubt. Because then I would be saying that you think you know better than I know. Because if they brought them together and they love each other, then, they, then he must have another black man. Her gene with white skin may be stronger than yours with black skin. That's a genetic fact. Because you're harboring four generations of you. Sometimes hey, just because you have dark skin and nappy hair, it doesn't make you purer than someone with light skin and wavy hair anymore. Because you are you, your mother's mother. I'm sorry, you're you, your mother, your mother's mother, your mother's mother's mother, and your mother's mother's mother. Four. You are you, your father, your father's father, your father's father's father, and your father's father's father. Four generations sitting there. You can't look at a person and say there's two light skin people that gonna have a dark skin baby or vice versa. You can't do that no more. That's right. So we are destroyed. And so we are reaching a point where it's possible for all the planets to be drawn back from the sun. Because in May 5th, 2000, the event, if the planet is not able to, enough, people in Mexico warned us in 1991. And they had all those flying saucers in Mexico, done on their tapes. They said that's the sign of the, of the thunders. The earth is going to change. Earth changes. Oh, y'all must be new age. Guess, guess what? That is a hell of a compliment to be called New Age. It means something new is coming in and I'll be a part of it. Christianity, Judaism, Islam is old age. 
That's why they used to sing. Give me that old time religion. They're going out. Something new. A new age. A new era is coming in. So they want to make new age look bad. So they go out, put a bunch of pistols in their hand, act crazy, do things as devils, commit suicide, and it creates a stereotype of what new age is. So when me and you come and say, no, we are the children of Aquarius. We're the new age of Aquarius. The sun cycle. We look like we belong. So you mean like those crazy people who walk around with stones? That's how well they plan their stuff. They run up ahead of us and create these scenarios. Right. You follow? We had nothing to do with Heaven's Gates. Caucasian, and a bunch of crazy people dressed in black committed suicide. We walk around dressed in black. So everybody says, oh, y'all must be a part of Heaven's Gate. They create the scenario for us. And when we get to do our job, we're blocked. Right. We start saying, oh, you must be with the so and so. The Moral Science Temple out of Washington, D.C. is trying to have a million man Moorish march now. Mm-hmm. What is the point? What is the point? We can have us. We can fear everything that's not done. I mean, it works. That's what's done. I'm back, back to the science center. Page 52,000. The planet Earth is on this side, another seven planets line up. If the vortex is, all the planets have a world vortex on it. All planets. Whenever they show you what NASA's doing, they show you Jupiter, Mars, any time you see a world in vortex on 32 degrees. And those world in vortexes don't line up equally like this. There'll be an imbalance on the pull and tilt. And then the planet is already off its axis. We are wobbling, drawing straight right toward the sun. And it's the sun, that's all, it's like a little dot on the sun. All the chain reaction on the other side, all the planets will be drawn back in time. What should be the results of this? Referred to as a star hole, you see. Because you see a big explosion in the universe. That can happen. If that don't happen, now we're at the point where the planet is shifting. It may not affect, it's a little more in effect. The global warming is in effect. Ice caps are melting. Floods are starting everywhere. So they say, well, wow, a flood in Alabama, and a flood in North Carolina, and then a flood over here. I don't understand. Because it says the earth coughs up its water for the flood. You're always looking for it to come down. It starts to rain, but then the water starts to lift out the toilets, and I've been saying it starts to link it, and it starts to pull. I'll leave it like this, too. They call this the planet Earth. Is it the planet Earth? What is it? The planet of water. Why? Why do you call it planet Earth? Because water is one of the most destructive forces on the planet. Tidal waves. Where are they coming from? Greenhouse effect. What does that do? It melts the ice in the Antarctica. Is that happening now? Yeah. So that means land mass is going down and Water rising. That's another inevitable assumption that's going to stop. Have you noticed that this summer, even up north, we had very hot weather? Yes. Did you notice the hot weather bend in the evening towards tropical weather? So it's real moist? Yes. Well, whenever it is a tropical evening, millions of cultures of bacteria get a chance to grow. Because they grow in moisture. There are new bacteria germinating every day now for this whole year. Bacteria that they don't know nothing about because they went into the rainforest, cutting down trees. Trees that have been there for hundreds of thousands of years with living cells within them. And they opened them up like cracking open an egg. And now these bacteria have to survive. They have to find some type of entity that's weak enough that they can parasite their bodies and kill them, and that's humans, animals. So first, they jump into the sea, and now the bacteria is killing turtles, frogs, whales, dogs, all kinds of seafood. They told you this year, don't eat oysters. They literally said, don't eat oysters this year. That's what they tell you, dangerous this year. Why? But the water's a poison. I think the Bible called it wormwood. Mm-hmm. Water's been poisoned. Mm-hmm. You notice you didn't see 
you like butterflies this year? Saw some butterflies. You didn't see that massive amount? How about the fireflies? Saw a couple of them. Right. Where were they? You should see them all over the night. You make music, catch them and scoop them from the dog. You didn't see them, did you? They're dying out. The ecology is shifting through the experience. This might not make them That's true. Have you noticed right behind your nose is dry? There's a funny feeling up there. That is lingering, almost lingering mucus. You're sick already. You're already sick. You're not going to get sick. You're already sick. Poison in the air. Foods are messed up. Bacteria are already in the back of your mouth. You ever notice how water tastes now? Hmm? Why? As a turkey, hey, it's poison. Not because they put it in there, because of nature, they it's time to get rid of the parasites that are destroying her. And you're one of those parasites. And Christianity, you give me that old time religion, folks, you don't have no answer. Preachers don't go near. Islam don't have an answer for it. Islam or Allah what about praying? No answers for these scientific facts that are not mentioned in their Quran. So they don't have no story for you. You usually got things, you got a whole big dialogue about what's going on until you come down to this type of stuff. And then why didn't the Quran warn us about these plagues, these thunders, these diseases? Why didn't the Quran, why didn't Allah, the all loving Allah, what do warn us about AIDS? And for the book of Revelation and the book of prophecy, why didn't it tell us about the book of AIDS? Why, why didn't it tell us about AIDS in the book? It didn't. It mentions plagues. And we align the plagues up and say, this must be this, this must be Goli, this must be Goli, this must be, you know, hoping that we solve it by pinpointing them. No way about any results. In reality, get it? You got a message to take to people. Get the crap. And look inside your own camp. There's going to be a lot of dissenting. Christians, get to it. Muslims, get to it. It's all over there. You watch their, their religion just decline, but they have no answers. You have the answers. So Pop gave us the he gave us the play, gave us the solution. The solution is that transformation. Where you take the inner you and let it dominate this body. As long as you're in love with this body and this physical world, there's no hope for it. You understand? I'm not telling you to commit suicide is not. Let me do it at all. The Bible is saying it's time for transformation. The journey inside of that mother and I store. Just keep being out there, build a big brand new square, just walk around the board. At my age, 53, that's all I got to do is spend an hour walking in a circle? No, we got to realign ourselves on a serious trip. Really got to be involved with our inner self. You understand?